All right, if you followed along in the previous video, we have set up React Query and we're going to start using it in this video. And the first thing we're going to do is to actually have an API that we can call to make some queries, because in this video, we're going to use the hook that's called use query. So what I found here is a site that's called recres.im. This is a fake API that we're going to use for this uh, little video. And, uh, and you can fake both pagination and also mutations in this one. Otherwise, I probably would have used uh, a real API, hopefully. Probably the Star Wars API or something, but you, but we can't fake mutations in that one. And I'm going to use the same API for all of these videos. So this is the one that I'm going to use, recres.in, and it's free to use. And um, you don't have to provide authentication and authorization and stuff like that. We can just use it. Go back to your code editor and inside the app.js, that's the file that we're going to be in. That's the component. And first up here, we're going to import use query from React Query. Import use query from React dash query. So that's the hook that we're going to use. And when we use this hook use query, we need to have a function that we provide it with. It's a fetch function. That's where all the logic goes to fetch stuff. And in our case, we're using a REST API. But one of the cool things with React Query is that it's something that's called agnostic. It doesn't care how you get your data. So you can use React Query for both REST and uh, GraphQL. I don't think all people know that you actually can use it with GraphQL also. I'm actually using it on a live site for my client for both REST and GraphQL. We have both REST APIs and GraphQL APIs. In our case, we're going to use REST. So we're going to create our fetch function, and this function has to return some kind of promise for React Query to be able to use it. So I create this function outside of the application to make sure that I don't have it inside of here and it will be recreated on each re-render. Otherwise, if you have it inside of here, you should probably wrap it in a use callback or something. But this function is absolutely fine to have outside a component because this function doesn't use anything that's React specific. So I'm going to call this fetch users. It's going to be an async function. And React Query also going to return an error state for us. But this function also have to throw the error itself. So I'm going to put this logic inside a try and catch. So we have the error inside of the catch. And if we have an error, I'm just going to throw a new error with the error like this. And inside the try block, we're going to do some fetching. So I'm going to return. First, I await. I have a parenthesis. Then I await again. And I probably say this in a lot of my videos. The first await is for awaiting the actual JSON conversion, because that's also async. And the second await inside of the parenthesis is to await the data from the API. So await, fetch, parenthesis. Then I have a string, HTTP, colon, forward slash, forward slash, rec, res, dot, in. And then the endpoint is forward slash, API, forward slash, users. We're going to grab some users here. And at the end, I'm going to convert it with JSON like this. So this is going to be our fetch function that we're going to provide to the use query hook. So let's go inside the app component. And I'm going to mark this with grab all users. Then I'm going to destructure out some stuff because the use query hook will return some good stuff for us to use in our application. So it's an object. So I have curly brackets and I just structure out the data. We have a boolean that's called is loading, and we have an error state equal. Then I call the use query hook, and the use query hook need two things to work. We need to provide it with a query key. The query key need to be unique. So you can either provide it with a string, or you can have an array with different stuff that you want to use for your key. Use query is smart enough, so it will take that array and create a unique string for it under the hood. In this case, we just need one string, and we can call it users. What I used to do if I have, for example, something that depends on something else, I actually use template literals instead of an array, so users. And then let's say that I have an ID of something. I do it like this, and that will make sure that you provide it with a unique ID. But in our case, 
We just need to provide it with users because that's unique enough. And then we provide it with a fetch users function. And this will hopefully give us some data in the data variable. And we have an is loading Boolean that's going to provide us with for, true or false if we're loading something. And we have the error state. And these are just three of a lot of stuff that the React query provide us with. You actually have something that's called is fetching also. So is loading is going to be the hard loading the first time it loads something. And then if you fetch something in the background and stuff, you're going to have a Boolean for that. And that's very useful if you, for example, have an infinite loading or something, you can use is fetching because that one is going to display true when you fetch more data, but we're not going to use that here. So in these tutorials, I'm going to show you the most necessary things that you will probably be used in, um, I don't know, 95% of the cases. So I'm not going to go through everything in this library because there is a lot of good stuff that you can use. All right, so for now, we're going to console log out the data like this to see what we got. Save the file, go back to the terminal and run the application. If you haven't started it, you can see that I've started it here. So I go to my browser and close this one down. And here we have it, I'm gonna reload it. Did I type something in wrong? Yeah, it should be HTTPS on this URL to the endpoint. Save, go back to the browser, reload it. And here you can see the data is first undefined and that's before it has fetched the data. And then we have the data here. So this is how the structure of the data looks from this API. We have the page, that's one per page, six posts per page and support something here to keep, yeah, contribute. And we have a total of 12 posts and with a total of two pages. And this is the actual data in a data prop. So here we have some users and now we can use this data. So go back to the code. And what I used to do is first, I'm going to check if it's loading and then you can show some loading state, the spinner or whatever. In our case, we're going to return a P tag that says loading like this. And then I'm going to check if we have some error, then I'm going to return. Uh, yeah, something went uh, wrong. You can also return the error itself. So you can do it here. I usually do it like this, or you can do it in the return statement here also to check for these ones, because now we're going to map through our data down below here and create a list of users. So we have the data and inside the data prop, we first have the data from React Query. And if we go back here, we also have a data prop. So if you don't want this to be called data, you can rename it with a colon to something else, uh, maybe users like this. So instead of data, we have users, users.data.map. And then we have a user like this. Parenthesis, I'm going to do an implicit return because we're only returning JSX. We have a P tag. We need to have a key when we map through stuff with React. So we have the user.id as a key. And then I'm going to display the first name user dot first underscore name and the user dot underscore the user dot last underscore name yeah console log we can't console log the data because i renamed it so it should say users and this should display the loading state first and when the data is fetched this one is going to be false and we hopefully don't have any errors and then we're going to display our list if we don't do this somewhere, this data is going to be undefined, so you can't map through it. So in this case, when we map through an array, you have to make sure that you actually have the data before you can map through it. Otherwise, it will throw an error. So in this case, we know that we have the data when the loading has finished. This one will turn to false, and then we have the data and can map through it. So save the file, go back to the browser, and here you can see that we have the list of names. So that's pretty sweet, and that's pretty much the basic on how use query works. You have a lot of other options you can use, and I'm going to show you a few of the options in a later video. But otherwise, I suggest that you read the documentation on React Query, and you will find a lot more good stuff. But in most cases, you will be fine with these ones here, with the loading state and the error and the data. And here you can also see the power of React Query. This is basically React hooks under the hood. 
Otherwise, you have to create these loading states and error states yourself if you don't use React Query. So this is one of the powers with React Query. And actually, one thing that you can't see that's also awesome is that it will cache the data. And that's a big thing, actually, because creating your own caching can be quite difficult. But React Query will provide you with caching of the data by default. You don't have to do anything. So it will be smart enough to actually use the cache data instead if it's the same data. And that's why you provide it with this unique key that has to be unique for that query. So that's the use query hook. And if you like this stuff, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. See you in another video.